Hey internet friends, to speak about Israel and the extreme Zionist influence over our government is a discussion that should really be taking place, but is muffled by accusations of anti-Semitism. Often when there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government, um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti-Semitic. Which is funny because by definition, a Semite is a member of any of the peoples who speak or spoke a Semitic language, including in particular the Jews, and the Arabs. And I can, with impunity, criticize the rest of the Middle East, who are also Semites, because the definition of anti-Semitism only refers to the prejudice against Jews. But I totally get it. Up until very recently, I believe that anyone who questioned Israel was a neo-Nazi. Back in high school, I attended this church where they'd pass the plate around the congregation, once for donations to the church, and a second time for Israel, the holy land of God's oppressed but chosen people, the patriarchs and the prophets of the Old Testament. But I digress. I get the sense that a lot of you who watch this channel are Christians, so maybe you've shared in my experience of Christian Zionism. Maybe you still subscribe to that belief system and you'll find this video incredibly offensive. I recommend you crack open the Talmud, the cornerstone of rabbinical education, which calls on Christians to be harmed both directly and indirectly. But I'm sure I'll have someone comment saying the mere fact that I brought up the Talmud is anti-Jewish slander. It's old religious fanaticism. And since I'm not Jewish, I couldn't possibly understand the laws that are written and quote them in context. But on the flip side, we can bring up any other religious text like the Quran and pick it apart with virtually no repercussions. The time is drawing near when the window of opportunity to speak freely will eventually vanish. In some parts of the world, there are laws and consequences for anti-Semitic speech. And day by day, the internet is becoming more and more censored for those of us who just want to know the truth about the Middle East. And in doing so, we have to take Israel into consideration because they're part of the Middle East. And to further that problem, Israel has hired university students to post pro-Israel messages on social media networks without needing to identify themselves as government linked. I came here to learn more about how uh, we as Israelis and as Jews can defend Israel online, on the internet, and particularly in Wikipedia in this case. Wikipedia is a bit of a complex system and it's sometimes hard to figure out the rules. I've personally tried to edit things um, in Wikipedia that were against Israel. I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. Um, which leads me to conclude that if, in fact, compromise is not coming, that the traditional way of Amer America gets to war is what would be best for U.S. interests. I mean, look, people, Iranian submarines periodically go down. Someday one of them might not come up. Who would know why? <laughs> We can do a variety of things if we wish to increase the pressure. I'm not advocating that. Have you ever heard about the day Israel attacked America, also known as the USS Liberty Incident of 1967? During the Six-Day War, 34 American servicemen were slaughtered and 173 more were wounded after Israeli forces repeatedly attacked USS Liberty in international waters. The Liberty was not a battleship and was entirely unable to defend itself. For decades, the US government threatened survivors with jail if they spoke about it and kept the truth from the public. Survivors of the attack have long maintained that Israel intended to kill the entire crew and sink the USS Liberty as a means of scapegoating the blame for the incident onto Egypt. But why would Israel want the US to believe that Egypt was responsible for the attack? It's a classic false flag, right? Shifting the blame for an incident as a means of drawing the president or the US public into declaring war on Egypt. Well, Israel claims that this attack was done in error. Audio evidence confirms that the Israelis knew the identity of the ship 
as an American vessel. Furthermore, did you know that Israel has nuclear weapons? In 1986, an Israeli whistleblower and former nuclear technician revealed that Israel had amassed a secret stockpile of nuclear weapons. This whistleblower spent 18 years in prison after revealing classified information. And in 2014, a lawsuit was filed against U.S. charities that funded Israel's secret nuclear weapon program. I don't know all the facts. I don't think we all know all the facts, but I was deeply concerned that uh, this could have been, um, uh, you know, another cons uh, organized, highly organized attack on the country. And it still may be, I, again, I don't know the facts, but I do know that it's really hard to protect the homeland. What has the media told us about 9-11? Before the attacks, there were many stories coming out about Israeli espionage on the United States. Did you know about the Israeli art students who occupied two entire floors of at least one tower? Did you know about the Israelis arrested on 9-11? Did you know that at the time, Mossad had an urban moving company as a front? They were seen by New Jersey residents on September 11th, seemingly celebrating the fall of the World Trade Centers and photographing themselves in front of the wreckage. These men were caught by police, held for questioning, and quickly sent back to Israel by the United States government. So did Mossad know about the attack on the Twin Towers before it happened? Did they have a crew ready to film it? What do we actually know? Very little, because it's anti-Semitic to bring it up. What has the media told you about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Israel has successfully wanted to prove to the world that it is an innocent victim of the Palestinian violence and terror, and that the Arabs and Muslims have no other reason to be in conflict with Israel except for an irrational hatred of Jews. And most of what we see on the news is Palestine as the aggressor and very little of how Israel responds. And don't get me wrong, Israel has a right to defend themselves from attacks, but for over five decades now, they have killed Palestinians with impunity. There seems to be a hierarchy of death propagated in our media, and when we see certain groups of people, as less than other groups of people. That's when the injustice occurs, unchallenged and leaving room for prejudice to fester. An example of this would be Israel's use of white phosphorus targeting densely populated areas of Gaza. So this is uh, basically something that is mandatory, that every congressperson has to sign saying that, what, Jerusalem, you said, is the capital of Israel, and what else? Uh, uh, you make a commitment that you will vote to support the military superiority of Israel, that um, uh, the economic assistance that Israel wants, that you would uh, vote to provide that. What have you learned about ISIS from the media? I've learned that ISIS has attacked the USA. ISIS has attacked France. ISIS has attacked the Philippines. ISIS even boasted that they were going to destroy Kaaba in Mecca. But ISIS doesn't attack just around the corner of Israel. I guess they would rather attack distant countries. In 2015, Syrian President Assad spoke about the connection between ISIS and Israel. He responded for the first time to an airstrike attributed to Israel, saying it's very clear that Israel supports the rebels because whenever we make advances in some place, they attack in order to undermine the army. That's why some in Syria joke, how can you say that Al-Qaeda doesn't have an air force? They have the Israeli Air Force. Even as early as this morning, a Syrian UN envoy claimed that Israel was directly supporting ISIS by bombing regime sites. There have been claims made that Israel is the largest buyer of ISIS oil, but whenever I search for sources to verify or debunk this claim, all I find are long rants on anti-Semitism. In 2015, NATO said it wouldn't send ground troops in to fight ISIS. Is it because ISIS is actually our ally, and the goal is to overthrow Assad in Syria and install a Israel and United States friendly puppet government instead of the Russia-Iran puppet that's currently in place? I'm just really, really confused. Israel can stop ISIS, but they can't stop people from throwing rocks at them.
Is that, do I have it right? I'm just really confused because in order to have clarity on something, one must have answers to their questions. And in order to get answers to your questions, it must first be acceptable to ask them. When I see things like evidence and the money trail to support that my government is acting like a cheap whore, selling out to the highest bidder, it makes me think that we'll never find anything that remotely resembles peace. As long as the wolves among people are above the law.